All right guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about the Polar Star Fusion Engine and how it compares to the Polar Star Jack. All right, so what we have here is a first generation Fusion Engine and a first generation Polar Star Jack. So both of them have a lot of similarities. Obviously they're both HPA systems. The Fusion Engine is a little bit more expensive and the $500 range, the Jack is gonna be a little bit less expensive around the 200, 250 range. And there's numerous advantages for both systems over AEGs. And there's certain regions why you may want to choose the Fusion Engine, or you might want to go with the Jack if you don't need certain other features. All right, so the first system we're going to talk about is the Polar Star Jack. So this is a first generation Polar Star Jack. We got them when they first came out. Uh, as you can see, this is the version two gearbox one. You just simply drop it into the gearbox as you would a normal cylinder obviously remove all your AEG parts it does come with a nozzle on it uh, unfortunately with the Polar Star Jack they do not have changeable nozzles so that's one disadvantage obviously its advantage is the price because it's significantly cheaper than the Fusion Engine and also if you're switching from an AEG this is going to be a huge upgrade in trigger response because obviously it's a HPA system. It does have an FCU you can program with the three round burst, four round burst, I think all the way up to nine round burst and obviously you can fire full auto or you can set it so all settings are always semi-auto. If you're going for a DMR setup maybe if your field doesn't allow you to shoot full auto as a DMR with this system, with a longer barrel, the max FPS we've got, I think, is around 475 FPS, maybe 500 if you have a really long barrel, and you're using lighter BBs. So this system, the strength is really just the adjustability over an AEG. You can play at a field, just simply turn your regulator down. If it's indoor, maybe shoot 350 FPS if you have a really low FPS limit. Um, and obviously you can turn it all the way up to maybe 475 if you have a long barrel and you're going for a medium range DMR setup on a field. Very adjustable. Trigger response is great on this thing, obviously. Uh, there's other settings in the FCU. You can adjust nozzle dwell, uh, things like that. One issue we did have with the Polar Star Jack is there was somehow a small piece of, uh, small piece of metal that got in between an o-ring in there and it actually caused an air leak so the nozzle would get stuck in the forward position so it would be forward and it would be letting air out and I think that's because we did open it to clean it and I think when we did do that we unscrewed the uh, Polar Star Jack obviously and the particle got in there so if you do have a Polar Star Jack uh, make sure if you are going to open it up and clean it you do so in a very sterile and clean environment because very sensitive to anything on those o-rings that might break the seal and then you're going to obviously have an air leak so that's one of the disadvantages that we found with this system but if you don't open it up and if you clean it in a good environment you shouldn't have that issue at all all right so next up is the fusion engine so this is a generation one fusion engine right now i'm running a purple nozzle in it which is made by amped airsoft so the Fusion Engine does run a little bit more expensive. It's in the $500 range. And instead of just being a small part that replaces the cylinder right here, it actually replaces the entire gearbox. So you don't you uh, take out the existing gearbox shell and you put this gearbox shell in to replace it. And obviously they sell version two, they sell version three. Um, for pretty much any gun you can find one of these. Polar Star is really good about adjusting their design. So just like the Jack, it's very modular. And one benefit to the Fusion Engine, it is a little bit more adjustable. So as you can see, they have multiple nozzles here. I have the blue nozzle, the red nozzle, and then I have a poppet over there, which we'll talk about later. But there's a vast majority of nozzles that you can use on this system. And obviously you can change your air settings on your regulator as well but the nozzle just allows you to have that much more adjustability so th this thing as it is now could probably 
with the right barrel and the right views probably shoot up to 650 fps obviously you're not going to be doing that but um, with the right nozzle as well you can turn it down to 275 even lower than that fps if you're at a field that really has a low fps limit or something like that also you can change your poppet too so this is the gold poppet right here in the fusion engines right now i have the stock poppet so a lot of people change their poppet and nozzle as a sort of a combination if they want to do air efficiency because one of the disadvantages to the polar star system is having a huge air tank on your back and some people instead of the normal stock they switch it out to an air stock which is made by polar star you can get it and it's a essentially it's an air tank that replaces your stock and it still has a part where you can uh put it on your shoulder but the tanks are small and you want to have good air efficiency so if you go on the forums online you can find people that do math calculations on max air efficiency with your polar star and the key to it is changing your nozzle out so just know that changing your nozzle does greatly affect the fps as well when we first got this uh, red nozzle we put it in there and we had a gold pop it in and we tested it and it only increased the FPS about 10 to 20 FPS. Then we took the gold nozzle out and put the normal poppet back in and increased the FPS by about 100 to 150 FPS. So just know that while changing your nozzle, you can get good air efficiency. If you're going for a DMR setup, you might wanna just choose to have the tank on your back and go for a high air consumption setup. All right, so bottom line, both these systems are very reliable. Both of them are going to give you great trigger response. The biggest difference between them is with the Polar Star Fusion engine, you get a little bit more adjustability than on the Polar Star Jack. However, the Polar Star Jack is great for somebody that's just getting into HPA. They don't necessarily need to shoot a ridiculous FPS or have that modularity. And even with the jack, you can still change your FPS a decent amount just using the regulator. So if you're just getting into HPA, I would recommend either of these systems. If you don't want to spend $500 on a Fusion Engine, the jack is another excellent choice. So let us know in the comments which system you like better or if you like an alternate system. And we'll see you guys in the next video.